Hello everyone, and welcome to Dice Roll, the queerest about fire podcast on our planet, where it's a hard question like, would you smoke a leshy? No. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I want I want both of you to explain. My little guy. Okay. Well, my side, the correct side, is that what's the problem? Mm-hmm. They're made of food, mm-hmm. made of greens. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? I agree. What if there's like just a little apple guy? And you're one apple short from your delicious little apple pie. Oh, no, I'm talking about smoking He's it like it's a weed. Anyways. I'm talking about smoking it like weed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's also fine. I think that if you're having a really bad time and your weed friend, uh, Leshy Craig, um, comes up to you and, you're, and he's like, I want you to have a good time. Here. And he, like, rips off his hand and he gives it to you. Yeah, your your buddy Smoke Bud uh, comes up to you and he's like, hey, man. I got just a fix for you. Gosh. Is he also high? Is he smoking himself? Can you blame him? Um, <laughs> I do want to say, Ritz, I appreciate you also putting uh-huh. in that you would eat a leshy alive. Appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean? See that I mean, it. I've grown. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's They come back. Okay. It's not they, like they're dead forever. Come on. Well, actually, they do lose their current personality and memories. Yeah, but that's not really death, is it? Yes, it is. No, it yes, is not. Yes, it is. Dave, can you tell me would you why you would not? You're the counter debate, and Luna, you're going to be the judge here. You tell me who's right. Okay. Oh, here we go. So, Dave, <laughs> yeah. you, you've heard now Ritz's uh, argument. What is your argument? Why would you not smoke a leshy? <laughs> They're a person. Okay. And? I'm not going to smoke a person. Okay. What if? What if they it, really like it? Yeah. What if they like? What if to them it's a sex thing? Are we forgetting about the person whose <laughs> consent? Are we forgetting about my consent here? <laughs> I consent. I consent. I don't. Ta- Isn't there someone you forgot to ask? I'm ta- What are you talking about? This would be me in this scenario, and I don't want to. That sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he's like, I consent, and you're like, I don't. And there's no third person. <laughs> okay. There's me. I'm the third person. Yeah. I think you should smoke that less you... So what if he asks you nicely, please smoke me? It's Rose, it's Smoke Bud. He's like, hey man, I have real need. I, I got too much of this stuff growing off me, man. Come on. It's just too bad. You're, and you're, let like, him suffer? You're like, it's like refusing to share a sheep is what you're doing. What are you talking about? You just said that they die. No, he might be fine. <laughs> There's a chance. I'm not risking that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> okay. Luna, whose <laughs> argument is correct? <laughs> mine. I... You have to give reason. <laughs> oh my god. Give us your dissertation, please. I, look, if it is between two consenting adults, <laughs> then fine. <laughs> Whatever, I guess. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm also taking Dave's side of why... Why? Why? Boo. Listen. <laughs> if they offered, I'd be a little weirded out. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, thanks for offering, I guess. Mm-hmm. If they weren't offering and you were just plucking a fucking leaf off of a leshy, or taking the whole ass leshy. <laughs> just rolling it into the biggest <laughs> blood possible. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know, so, as as always, consent is key. Thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> because the white people are at it again, it's scaring me. Hmm? Okay, the white people are at it, and it's scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> Would we like to play some white Pathfinder? White boys unleashed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, when we last left our adventurers in Abomination Vaults, Ulrich, Silk, and Fiore went deep into the ruins of Gauntlet, which they identified as the final battleground between the Roseguard and the evil sorceress who claimed the life of Otari Ilvanesh. They climbed to the top of the gauntlet and found a strange crystal which seemed to be shedding the light which people were seeing in the dark. They found an abandoned boat belonging to the Thieves Guild of the Osprey Club in Otari, but no sign of the Thieves. Finally, they made their way into a ruin on a second island, found a little brownie who was looking for a shiny, and encountered the one and only Mr. Beak, a soul-bound doll which seemed to have been trying very hard to kill Dear Sweet Silk. After a particularly rough fight, the trio went home 
and took the rest of the day to recover. And now the sun rises on the following day. It is deterred of Desdus, that's Fantasy May, and it is the day of the 500th Founders Festival, the anniversary of the creation of Otari by the Rose Guard. Sunlight dances through the overcast clouds that hang over the town of Otari, and it is a town that is very well decorated. Bunting hangs from building to building, and the sound of musicians fill the streets. As people walk down the roads, there are people dressed in costumes. We see people wearing armor made out of uh, wood and leather, fashioned to look like the Rose Knight herself, the ancient Vol Rajani. We see followers of Arastal, with their holy symbols around their neck, praying and smiling as uh, passerbys come by them. We see stands being set up on the street for games and contests. And of course, uh, in the town square by the Otari market, a stage is being set up for the school play and later the political speeches from the mayor and the townsfolks. All in all, it is a good day for Otari to turn 500 years old. Wow. Old ass city. Very generous of you to call it that. This is barely bigger than the village. Yeah. I think Otari has a population of like 800. God damn. Jeez. Otari has a, a population of 1,240. Just so you know. Wow. It's not it's not huge. Could be smaller, but it's not huge. But I would say a vast majority of those 1,000 people are on the streets today taking power in festivities. So I'm going to roll a dice and I'm going to see who we go around to first to ask how you're doing, what you're doing today for, uh, for the Founders Festival. And then I'm going to ask you uh, what you did as you leveled up to level three. So... <laughs> Okay. I'm rolling a d6. That's a four, which I'm going to give to Fiore. Okay. Hi. Fiore Sunchaser. That's me. Your family and your church are quite busy today, aren't they? Yes. Very much so. What's going on? Um. Well, he's helping out the church because he's a member of it. Um. There's... Uh, I think they're setting up... Uh, they're, are they're, is it still in the setting up phase right now? I think... I think by now we're going to cut to noon. Okay. And I think it is fully set up. Uh, there are some Serenite uh, clerics and stuff uh, who I think are dancing, doing uh, like a performance, like dancing performances. Nothing like formal, but mm -hmm. they're doing it. Um, and... Mm -hmm. Dance is a very important part of the fate of Seren Ray. And there is a booth uh, that's selling food. And I think Fiore would be working that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're selling uh, just food and snacks to anyone who is watching uh, to raise money. Uh, it very clearly states on the sign below. Raise money for immigrants from Last Wall. You know, helping people escape the wretched disaster of the tyrant's grasp from two years ago. Yeah. Um, how is Fiore feeling right now? Uh, he, he's great. Fiore is in a great mood. I think he keeps thinking about the dungeon, and then he looks even happier for a minute. Um, so I think he's in a good mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> so as uh, someone comes up to you and buys a sandwich from your stall, Fiore, or what is it? Did you have you helped with the cooking? Um, I think he did. I think he did. He likes cooking. What did you make? Um, I like the concept of like uh, meat pies. They're easy That's to nice. hold with okay. one hand, and they have filling in it. It's like a sandwich, but less messy. Okay, cool. You, you, as you are selling meat pies that you helped make yourself, Fiore. I want to ask, how did you do today when you leveled up? Well, uh, well I I got class feature stuff, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Mm -hmm. Um. But I did, I, I did get, oh, I raised, uh, I think I raised my strength. 
Yes, so we are doing uh, gradual ability boosts where every level except for a few, you will raise your uh, attribute modifiers, which is your strength, your dex, etc., by one each level. Uh, you can only do so many of them in a row. Like, you can't do strength every level. Mm -hmm. um, but basically every level, this is to ask you, what did your character get better at last level, right? Mm -hmm. So what did Fiori get better at? Uh, well, I mean, he did a lot of actual like combat stuff. So I think he just mm -hmm. got stronger. Your strength score has received a partial boost. It's already a plus four, so it's going to not jump up by a whole plus one yet. Mm -hmm. You got to spend two boosts over the course of a few levels to get that. That's fine. Um, and you also got a general feat this level, right? I did. And tell me what you got. I, t I took Ancestral Paragon. And what does Ancestral Paragon do? Um, Ancestral Paragon uh, gives me uh, an ancestry feat. Okay, very cool. So instead of a uh, general feat, you got an ancestry feat. What ancestry feat did you take? I took Natural Ambition. Okay, what does Natural Ambition do? I can take a class feat. <laughs> so... <laughs> 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 Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> the daisy chaining oh my god <laughs> oh my god we did try to make it a longer loop-de-loop -loop. i wanted one more to give him another general feat but no that's not how it works god. what class feats did you get uh, i took desperate prayer what does desperate prayer do <laughs> um it's basically if I am, if it's my turn and I have no focus points, but I really need a focus point, um, I believe it's once a day I can call out to uh, my deity, that'd be Saren Ray, and uh, like I call out for help from her and then I will instantly recover a focus point. So like if- as a, as a free action. If, yes. So if there was like an emergency and like if I didn't heal Silk in the next turn, and um, an Ulrich didn't have the time to heal because the bad guy was going in the next thing, but I had no focus point. I could use that as like a, oh God, to uh, save Silk's life or something, for example. I do love that you use Silk mm -hmm. as an example here mm -hmm. after, <laughs> after the burning lesson you learned. I didn't, well, I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong here. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> uh, Silk did something wrong by pissing off a puppet, I guess. Um, by fucking existing? By fucking existing. <laughs> By telling the truth. <laughs> uh, so, Fiore, we're going to start with you, okay? Okay. As you stand by these meat pies, a figure comes up behind you and puts a heavy hand on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. And you turn and look at that figure, and you smile as you see the reassuring presence of one Rumina Sunchaser, your mom. Uh, Fury smiles, smiles at her, and is like, oh, hi, Mom. Uh, Rumina is a dwarf. Um, she is black, uh, has her hair tied into a braid, and she has a big, like, her beard is also very braided. Mm -hmm. And uh, she smiles and says, hey, sunlight, how goes the meat pies? You holding up the stall all right? Yeah, I am. Uh, unlike Vandy, who wears mostly, like, very, um, very flowy robes and, like, uh, linen, uh, Rumina wears kind of more hearty clothes. She's like, Vandy's pretty femme. Rumina is a stone cold butch. Um, she smiles and says, you want me to take over the stall? Uh, I've got to make sure to, uh, I want you to go see the festival, you know? Mm. You can't be stuck here doing work all day, especially not after you made a couple of new friends, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> so what do you think so far? It's, uh, and she looks over at like uh, the people doing the shine dance and uh, she smiles and says quite the sight to behold isn't it yeah I'm having a good time already even though I've just been working <laughs> our brothers and sisters are so graceful I wish I could join but you know two left feet <laughs> it's okay she, she kind of sheepishly scratches her face I think you're great at dancing oh Fiore you know certain right tolerates not a lie <clears throat> I think you're great at dancing. I appreciate that. The fact that you are not being burnt by the sun means that she must believe you are telling the truth, <laughs> which is very kind of you. It's my job. Hey, hold on. What's that? What's what? You seeing that? What? Over in the dancers? Hmm? There is one 
pretty lady dancing. Look at her. No. No. And there, what? Vandy is, of course, dancing away. And she's like, you see this? He's oh, covering my. his face. He's like, Mom, that's embarrassing. <laughs> What? You don't love that your moms love each other terribly? I love that you love each other. Hey, gorgeous! Oh, oh no. Vandy stops, looks over wide-eyed. Hey, keep it up! You know? Pretty good. She's patting your back heavily, Fiore. <laughs> Vandy waves and says, How are you still here? I thought that would have scared you off. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go find other food, maybe. Okay. Be sure not to overeat. You know your mom loves making big dinners. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll stop her to we'll get her to stop packing you four lunches. I eat them all. How do you manage that? Anyway, <laughs> see you soon. Okay, King Sunlight. Okay, mom. I think he gives her a kiss on the cheek. Love you. Say it back. Love you. And then he runs off, left her waving to her. Okay. She waves. Love you, Fiore. And uh, you dash off uh, into the town, making your way through the festivities. Ulrich. Hi. What is Ulrich doing today? Um, if it's about noontime, then he's probably... Um, well, question first, where mm-hmm. are his parents? So uh, his parents are at the Farmer's Guild. Okay. Um, uh, they are going to be helping out with some of the events today, and I think mm-hmm. Ulrich would probably be aware of the events. Okay. Then, uh, if they're off doing that, then he is probably taking care of some, like, last-minute deliveries for, like, his, um, his medicine run, and then, well, at least before, like, all the festivities are completely, like, going on. Mm-hmm. So he's not distracting anybody, and he has time to relax, so he's just... Uh, running around doing errands before uh, before everything kicks off. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so, before anything else, and how? By the way, mm. how does Ulrich feel about the Founders Day festivities? Uh, I think he probably thinks that it's pretty fun. He thinks it's a cool like um, town festival that brings everybody together. Uh, he definitely in- um, likes that his parents are pretty uh, involved in it. So, mm-hmm. and by proxy, he sometimes is uh, also like involved, or at least he knows the goings on. So, it's almost like, it, especially when he was kind of a kid, he did have like the little uh, uh, <laughs> the little thing of I know things <laughs> smile. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Ulrich, I will, I will say, uh, you know that the things that happen with the Farmers Guild. They're wild every year, but this year is especially, like, it's crazy. I think you're almost like, why did my dad agree to this? But, yeah, it's going to be a trip if anyone takes part in that particular event. If anything, Um, he's just curious. So, let's talk about leveling up. Mm -hmm. You're level three now. Yes. Basically the strongest person in the world. uh Uh-huh. Can you tell me a little bit about what you got this level? Uh, well, um, second level spells. I unlocked those. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. Got two, uh, second spell ranks, which is great. Uh, and, uh, general feats. This time mm-hmm. I chose, um, this time I chose Incredible Initiative. Ooh, hell yeah. And Incredible Initiative, what does that give you? It gives me a uh, plus two circumstance bonus to my initiative. That means that Ulrich will be more likely to quickly jump into the fray when combat starts, mm-hmm. which is very good if you need to position yourself. That and uh, he, I think he noticed that during their first, like, uh, during the dungeon, he was a little slow in the uptake. Mm-hmm. And especially when it comes to bars with the buff... Mm, you you want to get that up early. To give the buff early, mm. so he wants to be. He tried to be a little quicker on the draw. Actually, I think he trained this in the morning. He got up early, like actually really early, uh, to train. Okay, I see. That's really fun. Okay, cool. And uh, Ulrich, what ability did you boost this level? Wisdom, actually. Oh, interesting. Uh, Ulrich did a lot of. Um, 
I would say that Ulrich did a, quite a bit of, like, uh, survival and nature checks mm -hmm. uh, last time, uh, last few sessions. So, uh, he boosted up his wisdom, which means he also boosted his perception. Nice! Okay, excellent! That's really good! Um, so, Ulrich, as you finish your delivery rounds, you are probably uh, hopping back into the person that you are working with for this. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, you need to go to uh, the postmaster of the town to get the list of who you're delivering stuff to. Mm -hmm. You know? Because yeah. most people in town, when they need those medicines, they'll put in a request with Galentine's Deliveries. A large sign depicting a man riding at breakneck speed on horseback as he balances a stack of packages in one hand stands out in front of this large building. Galentine Deliveries handles Otari's post, both within town limits and beyond. Uh, the postmaster is Aloria Galantine. She is a seventh generation citizen of Atari and owns and operates Galantine Deliveries, the fastest and most reliable delivery service in the area. She is a retired Immenwood Ranger, uh, and she can probably acquire anything that you guys might need that you can't find in an Atari. Although the price for such orders might be steep. Um, as you make your way in, it's also a stable, so like you can hear like horses in the background. Uh, she kind of leans over the counter and says, You're done already? Yeah, yeah, it was wasn't too difficult. I think a lot of people made their orders uh, earlier in advance because of the festival. Hmm. You're fast on your foot, kid. Even in the middle of this very busy day, you got everything done in record time. Really? Well, um, I mean, it's big day for big day for Atari, so... With a lot of foot traffic, I'm surprised that you didn't get crushed by stampeding children with wooden swords. <laughs> I've got a faster reaction than needing to worry about running kids. Hmm. I heard, by the way, on the grapevine that you and some others went into the uh, the ruins to the northwest. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a uh, that was something. Hmm. How did you find uh, your taste of adventure? Was it to your liking? <laughs> uh, I. Learned that I have a lot to learn. <laughs> That's the secret. You never do stop learning. Mm. But hey, that's one of the joys of life. Well, as green as anyone can be, I'm as green as my goddamn cloak. Hmm. But if you never if you never go adventuring, you'll stay that way. I suppose so. Regardless, you gonna take the rest of the day off? Take a part in the festivities? Yeah, yeah. I just got the last one done. Turning in the, uh, the, the list and... That's it for the day. Good. I'll probably see you around. I'm going to probably take a while off. I don't see many people urgently looking for deliveries done on the day of the uh, Founders Festival, so... Nah, I imagine everyone did everything in advance, so I'll wait until after. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, apparently, Carmen from Blade for Glades. He's going to be doing a knife throwing competition. That sounds like it'll be my fun. Huh. Might be entertaining to watch. Yeah, well... If we can get past his awful attitude first, but that's really... Uh, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> she raises a hand. Don't, uh, don't, don't. Like, you, like you know that I talk to anyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you know that he likes to talk to anyone who'll listen, so easy prey. And with that, she kind of smiles and says, you going to go have some fun? Uh, yeah, just walk around, check out all the decorations, maybe get something to eat. Looking forward to it. See you around, okay? Yeah, I'll see ya. Enjoy the festival. You too. And Ulrich, with that, you turn around and you make your way into the town. Silk Witch Helm. Huh? How is everyone's favorite wizard doing today? I think that Silk's doing just good. Um, this isn't something that Silk is particularly used to. He hasn't been here for that long. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not his, like, first Founder's Day. Yeah. Um, I don't know that, uh, it's, uh, it might be, like, his second, even, uh, because I don't know that the first year that he was here, that he participated. Oh, the first year he was, like, looking at the window being like, look at all these strange <laughs> What are these folk. fucking people doing? Goodness, who cares? But this year you're taking part? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before anything else, what level, is, what's, what's up with Silk being level tree? That's crazy. That is crazy. That's crazy stupid. Uh, Silk's got a few more additions to his lovely little spellbook. 
Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, I also at this level took uh, weapon proficiency. So what did I? I can assume what weapon proficiency does, but why did you take it? Gun. Shoot the gun. You can now shoot your gun as well as Ulric can shoot their bow. <laughs> you have the same attack modifier, which is so funny. Just the image of Silk being like, Perfect. I've run out of slots, but I have not run out of bullets, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, right. it's perfect. Um, and what ability did you boost, my friend? I also boosted wisdom. Nice. How come? Oh, actually, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. You had a taxing mental encounter with uh, someone trying to affect your mind, and you've come out stronger because of it. Don't want it to happen again. I can imagine. Um, so, Silk, where are you spending your Founders Festival? Is there anywhere that you're starting off with? Are you at any of the events or the things? Um, what are the events? What are the things? Well, every single place on a map has an event or a thing, except for, I think, Crow's Kimmicks. So you could go to Odd Stories. You could go to any other place. Like, seriously, there's basically a hundred things to do. <laughs> What's happening in the market? Okay. So, Silk, you walk through the Otari market. And uh, you, as you make your way through, you can see that uh, there are contests of all kinds going through. Like, there are many different crafting contests. All of the objects that you see as you walk through are, like, handmade. You see uh, a wood carving contest. Then a little, like, a little bit away, there seems to have been a cooking contest. And a little further on, there was a glass blowing contest. And basically everyone in town who has made, like, who can make things, has made things here, okay? And uh, mm -hmm. basically, if you think that your character would have been working on something here, uh, you could roll a crafting check to see if they win any prizes in it. Would Silk have made anything? You know what? Yes. Okay. Silk, Silk is a crafter. Um, I, it's not particularly his trade, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's something that he is skilled uh, in, extremely skilled in, and that's um, tailory, making clothing. Tailory, all right. Yes. Silk, are you putting? Are you like displaying some of your fashion alongside the humble people of Otari? Yes, he is. Okay. Can you describe what it is you have entered into the fashion contest? Ooh, I think. Uh, I think that Silk has been working on a very gorgeous, deep, deep burgundy cloak Ooh. Um, that has uh, embroidery uh, on the back and a very um, color-shifting lining on the inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, on the back of it is... Does, does Otari have, like, a symbol? <laughs> yes. Uh, the symbol of Otari is indeed an osprey. Uh, it is a bird that was uh, very much so associated with uh, Otari Ilvanesht. It was like his patron animal, you know, it was like his mark, if you will. Um, it's why the Osprey Club, the Thieves Guild, uh, has adopted it as their name, because they fancy themselves like Otari themselves. Okay. Um, then I think that's exactly what's on the back of the cloak, uh, an embroidered uh, osprey. Um, with very, very tiny uh, uh, embellishments of, like, beads throughout it. Very nice. Okay. Um, so I think as you settle down your beautiful cloak, the woman next to you is none other than uh, a, the, a sweet middle-aged woman with a peg leg by the name of uh, Tamily Tandervale. She, you would know her from the Otari fishery, uh, which, as well as being a fishery, also is uh, kind of like the games hall of town. Uh, like in the evening, she'll open up the, the fishery and let people come in, play music, uh, play games. You know, it's kind of like a social hub. And she is kind of peering mm -hmm. over at your work as she puts down 
a knitted jumper, you know, like a, a, a big woolly cardigan. It's like, say, bud, that's real nice. That's a real, what is that? Like a, like a smock? Uh, it's a cloak. Oh, well, it's just so fancy. I had to assume it was something else. That You've got a real uh, hand for craft, Mr. Witch Helm. That's real impressive. I'm very flattered. Thank you. <laughs> My, myself, I've, I'm no good at this whole fashion thing, love. I just made myself a little something simple, you know? <laughs> See, and she, she holds up the, the, the jumper, and it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I learned it from my nephew. He's like real big into the whole sewing and embroidering thing. I'm just picking up notes from him. But uh, what do you think? It's not good. Well, I'd say. <laughs> His silk smiles. He does not let on that he thinks that it's. It could be better. It's, uh, it's he, I, I, he, <laughs> he's, like, he's like picking it up in his hands and he smiles. Just like, I'd say that this is a solid entry. Oh, you really think so? That's. Mr. Witchelm, you are the nicest wizard I ever met. Now, granted, I only know you and Mr. Morlebent and uh, Mr. Carlte, but you're certainly nicer. You're certainly real pleasant. I'll say that much. <laughs> much more so than Morlebent. <laughs> I figured, listen, it's function over form, and this thing has so much sheep's wool, it'll keep you real warm during these uh, cold nights, you know? Function over form is important. And I'd say you're well on your way. That, thank you so much, Mr. Witch Elm. That I really do appreciate that. And I think she suddenly straightens up. And says, oh, watch out. Here comes a judge. I'm going for gold place. And she kind of winks. She knows it's not great. Um, <laughs> Silk, I would like you now to make me a crafting check. And there are three DCs you can beat here. Okay? Okay. Uh, the, the lowest DC is 22. If you beat that, you will get third place. If you get a 24 okay. or higher, you get second place. And if you get a 26 or higher, okay. you get first place. All right. So um, I have a single hero point. Keep that in mind. <laughs> you going to use it here? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Listen, this is his fucking ego we're talking about. Okay. So roll me that crafting check. I don't need hero points. I don't need <laughs> luck. Everything is coming up silk. Oh my god. <laughs> that is a 19 plus 9. That is a 28. <laughs> so I'd like to remind you that this is a very, like, this is a town with not many people doing fashion. Um, silk, the judge is, uh, the judge, there's two judges, right? Uh, one of them mm -hmm. is like a middle-aged woman with glasses. I think he's maybe like the, the town tailor. And then walking by with her is um, Kiel, uh, Kielano Latinar, the uh, head of the Atari market. And he, he takes one look at your thing and she's still like looking very carefully at all the other entries and being like, oh, wow, yes, nice craftsmanship. Yes, definitely on the right way. Kielano like kind of nudges her and says, that one. And she looks over and says, oh, oh, yes, this is very big. That's the first place winner that one is. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we haven't seen. No, that's the first place winner. I'm saying it right now. Uh, Mr. Witchelm, isn't it? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Witchelm. That's first place. No doubt about it, my friend. And she's like, again, we haven't seen all of that. <laughs> and he says, ma'am, it's first place. Come on. Look, it's got little balls on it and stuff. Those are beads. Yeah, that's what I said. And he kind of grins and uh, says, well done, yeah, uh, you'll get your your prize in the evening. It's uh, 10 gold for first place. And she's like, again, we have we can't say that until... And he takes out a bag of gold and puts it in your hands. Says, well done, champ. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And he stuffs that into his uh, pocket. And you get 10 gold and also you get honor for lifetime, fame and fortune. Um, you are the best... Ooh. You're the best uh, tailor in town. This other tailor is just a pretender compared to you. <laughs> I cannot wait for Silk to get this fashionista spell, which is a real spell that exists. Oh, I know. I've been. I've considered it. <laughs> it is. It has been within my hands' reach, and I am. It might be there one day. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, Silk is glowing. His his ego is massive. Uh, he knows that this is a small town, and he, this is the first year that he's entered this, I think. Just fucking blowing him out of water. But 
currently his thoughts are, wow, that was fucking easy. It was. Th there were sort of a few nice things, but really, like, the best sort of thing you saw were, like, I don't know, a nice pair of trousers you saw someone make. Really, other than that, it's a lot of amateur stuff, and you come here <laughs> with your fucking fashion magic that you've been spending, like, months on, and these guys were like... Oh. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no magic. No, 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 no. No magic? This is just pure skill? Does... No, this is incredible pure skill. Silk has spent, like, half of his fucking lifespan at this point uh, studying, like, <laughs> fashion and doing that as a hobby. No magic. Silk would never. That's really fucking funny, actually. Um, okay. <laughs> Silk, that's you. That's me. Now, as the date continues... And Tamley congratulates you on your win, by the way. Very heartily. <laughs> the three of you, at some point, just kind of bump into each other in the middle of town. Festivities are flowing. The three of you are coming out of your respective uh, kind of first part of the days. And I want to ask how everyone is... Like, how as you guys all kind of... All, I think, maybe stumble into each other at the same time. Fate strings pulling you in one place. What happens? Tell me about it. Oh, fancy seeing you two here. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, well, it's a bit big festival. Small town. You guys have not seen each other since Silk's incident yesterday. Are you, <laughs> Fiori's like, are you feeling all right now? Oh, I'm fine, but thank you for your worry. I know I may be a wizard, but I, I'm a big man. <laughs> Uh, he, like, puts uh, the man in quotation marks. <laughs> the aura is like, I, don't worry, I, I don't think you're weak. I just was worried about you. Which helms bounce back. That's fair. We're glad to see you're doing okay. And you, are you alright as well? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, just fine. Uh, just been walking around. As you guys kind of stand, festivities flow everywhere, and there's a lot to do. You could split up and go your own ways, mm -hmm. but maybe the festivities will be more fun with each other. Perhaps. Um, I think Silk kind of um, stands up straighter a little bit uh, and is like, did either of you have plans for the rest of the day? Um, I was just going to explore. If you want, we could do that together. Um, Ulrich shakes his head uh, and says, I didn't really plan too much for the day, just was gonna see what today brought. Yeah, that's how I was doing it too. Uh, I wouldn't mind joining you both. And he like puts his hand on his cheek and like kind of <laughs> <laughs> twists himself. Oh, he's so fucking great. <laughs> Would you guys like to start exploring? And uh, basically, you have free reign of Otari. I have put down pointers on the map everywhere. And practically every single one of these, mm -hmm. bar a few, have an event that you can attend, which will teach you about the people who are there, and also potentially win you some gold if you're lucky. In the uh, afternoon, you know that there is going to be uh, the school play, where they're going to tell the story of the Rose Guard, very interesting, of course. And uh, then in the evening, there'll be a few mayor speeches. Uh, there's an election coming up, and uh, there's probably going to be some campaigning for that. Always a bit of a laugh, considering the incumbent mayor has been mayor for like 10, 20 years now, because there's he's the only guy really interested in politics here. The only guy seriously interested in politics. We'll get to that. I see. So I want to ask, who wants? Who, where would you guys like to go? There's all these places all around the map that you can all kind of hop around to. What's up? Where are you going to go? Hmm. Uh, they're, they're standing not that far away from the, the Farmer's Guild in town. I think Silk kind of um, peeks over uh, Ulrich and Fiore uh, and just kind of, well, what's down there? Hmm? Fiore looks over his shoulder. Oh, um... This is the Farmer's Guild. We could go there. If you wouldn't mind. Alric, do you mind? <laughs> Alric, uh, does, there is a, a bit of a 
noticeable 0.5 second pause as Ulrich is like, oh, my parents are there. <laughs> 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 and but being the person that he that they are, um, they're like, yeah, yeah, we can visit. Do either of you want to make a perception check, or do you want to just say, yeah, fuck it, let's go, let's see what's going on? Or I will. <laughs> Absolutely let me perceive, please. Uh, let me know if they succeed, because I will tell them what the ticks are. Okay, so uh, what is your... Is this deception or stealth that we're going for? I think it's got to be deception, because, oh man, you're... Oh, Ulrich, <laughs> honey, you're untrained in deception, so you're... Yeah. You got a plus four to deception. Yeah. Which means that your DC is a 14. Oh, yeah. Silk rolled a 24, my man. <laughs> That's a critical oh, success. Shit. Silk knows your every secret. Uh, so what Silk <laughs> sees is um, Ulrich, as he kind of as he kind of looks back over his shoulder to the farmers guild, bef- like before he said anything. Um, when his <laughs> when he turns back. You see pink in his eyes. <laughs> and then um, there's kind of like a slight like heel tap just a little bit, but it's it's not super noticeable. But with that, you notice that <laughs> um, during that 0.5 second pause. But he ends up saying OK <laughs> and Silk? looking like there's almost nothing wrong. <laughs> Silk, what you put together from this is that Ulrich is embarrassed to go here and uh, the only reason that you can imagine someone like Ulrich being embarrassed is if he knows someone who is there that will make him embarrassed judging by Ulrich's general uh, demeanor you assume that he's kind of a family guy uh, so it's probably going to be family who are there and judging by Ulrich's reaction to meeting family those family might be a little less shy than he is Silk literally is sizing up Ulrich right now (laughs) (laughs) Ulrich, would you like to make me a perception check? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Silk's looking at you funny. <laughs> uh, I his eyes widen. There is more pink in his eyes, and he looks down at the floor like there's some interesting rock that just was kicked in the um, mid distance. <laughs> For, the, for record, you're right, you don't see shit. You're happily walking towards the Farmer's Guild. These were having a <laughs> battle of the minds, and you're like, oh boy, the Farmer's Guild! He's like, oh, I love fresh fruit. <laughs> uh, as soon as Ulrich is looking down, Silk literally, like, lowers himself so that it's hard not to look at him, and says, <laughs> I'm sure you can show us around, can't you? <laughs> they jump a little bit. The scariest <laughs> shit you would say to him, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they, they jump just a bit and uh, look off to the side. Uh, they have a hand like in the back of their neck, just rubbing awkwardly. Like, e- e- yeah, e- yeah, I can, I-, I know the place a bit. Oh, you do? Oh, right. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, my parents are uh, vintners, so they. Uh, part of the farmer's guild. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Ulrich is not looking. He's, he's so embarrassed right now. <laughs> but um, so Reveling in it. The, the, there's a chance that we might see them in there, but... You'll never yeah. guess who's coming out the front door. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, yes, but for his sake, no. (laughs) (laughs) So, first off, what you guys know about the Farmer's Guild. uh, This building and its nearby yards provide stables, livestock pens, butcher shops, and a guild hall for the region's farmers. The guild hall maintains a dozen rooms that are free of charge to visit farmers, but others can pay for them. The current guild head is a business-minded halfling woman named Jala Highstepper, who maintains a shrine to a rascal in a side yard. She's in a cleric herself, and hopes someday to convince a visiting priest of Arastal to settle in Otari. Despite the fact that she has done an admirable job of it herself so far. However, that's not who's walking out. No. Uh, the two people who are uh, walking outside, there's a man and a woman. Slightly wealthier farmers, but the man, uh, he's kind of heavyset, kind of got a little bit of stubble, almost reddish hair, 
and really big smile on his, uh, his face. It seems like it's almost always there. Uh, he's got like a white button up and a, kind of a vest going over it and a little cravat coming out from his neck. And then uh, next to him is a woman who is kind of stringy. Um, she's got like a, a weathered look to her. Like she's been through a lot in her life, but goddamn, she's overcome anything that's been thrown her way. She's got her hair in a bun, kind of like caramel hair. A lot more calm looking than her husband. I will also say that neither of them look anything like Ulrich. <laughs> like, you would not recognize these to be Ulrich's parents if Ulrich were not shrinking the way he was. <laughs> and as soon as one of them sees you, uh, Mr. Ravera smiles broadly and says, well, 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 if it isn't the man of the hour himself. All right, my boy. And he comes over and he gives you a big old hug. Uh, uh, hi, Dad. <laughs> we was just talking about you inside, tell, uh, off with uh, Jada, telling you how well you were doing with your loot stuff. Very good. <laughs> uh-huh. The woman, Mrs. Raver, she comes out and smiles at Fiore and uh, Silk, shakes both of your hands and says... Nice to meet you both, boys. You must be uh, the people that uh, Alric went into the dungeon with. Uh, yes, it's nice to meet you. She shakes her hand firmly and says, Nice to meet you too, Mr. Sunchaser, and you as well, Mr. Witchhelm. Alric's talked all about you. He seemed very happy to be able to go on an adventure. Yeah, that is so down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, happy. Mr. Ravra says, My name is Edvin. Edvin Raver. You can call me Edvin or Ed if you like. This is my beautiful wife, Kanna. You all here for the, uh, the farmer's event? Uh, I wasn't sure what events were going on. We were just exploring. Oh, oh, we've got something fantastic for you today. How much do you lads know about milking? No. You ever done it? Well, <laughs> we've got a real event going on. Um, one second. Let's Java! And, uh, kind of coming out the front door comes a little halfling woman. Uh, she's wearing greens and golds. She's got a blue kind of like uh, headband made of flowers around her hair. And uh, she's smoking a little pipe as she comes out and says, Ah, hello, everyone. Are you here for the uh, the milking? Oh, I suppose we are. I guess we well, are. It's better to do it earlier before the cows get too spooked. <laughs> and what what Edvin Ravra says is a surprise to Fiori and Silk, but unfortunately not to you, Alric, because he's told you all about it for the last while. <laughs> and Edvin beams oh, and no. says so there's a few wild cows near Atari uh, no. oh there are mm -hmm. we've driven them out closer to the edge of town we're going to give you five minutes and a bucket and we're going to measure how much milk you get in that bucket and at the end if you've beaten the previous record You'll be the new record holder for today until someone else comes and beats you. But every single team that goes in is going to make the cows more and more skish. You know, these aren't domestic cows. I will remind you. Uh, huh. hmm. That's a pretty interesting game. And this is the part where I tell you guys that this is apparently a real thing. The author of Abomination Vaults Expanded, Taylor Hotskiss, his town did this every year for the 4th of July. You, this is not a serious? weird made up thing. This is real. What on earth? Would you like to go team up and milk some cows? Fiore certainly would. Fiore don't care. <laughs> he's like, well, this sounds like fun. Silk. Um, he's like, oh, that sounds like fun. I'm, I'm so glad, Edwin Grins, turns to you. Silk, what about you, my friend? Oh, Mr. Witchhelm. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, I'm more of a spectator. Then why don't you encourage them? Shout words of encouragement. You've got magic. Surely you've got a spell of, like, milk cow, right? <laughs> that's wizards. That's the uh, kind of spell wizards uh, study in your <laughs> fancy schools <laughs> off in Absalom, that's right? Not a real thing. Uh, something close to that. No, no, I do have something close. <laughs> what spell do you have? <sighs> Kana nods and says, I feel it is a, ha a spell that should be practiced. Maybe, Mr. Witchhelm, uh, you'd be able to pioneer it. She says that completely seriously. Mom, <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. I don't know if I can fit that into my studies. Jala says, listen, are you all going out or are you staying? No harm, no foul if you don't take part, but it does look like it could be a bit of fun. Or just looks at the other two. 
<laughs> he's just he's not saying anything. <laughs> uh, I Oh, Ricky Roo, come on, don't don't look so glum. <laughs> <laughs> He goes to cover his mouth. mouth. Not here, please. What? Your mo your own mother can't call you Ricky Roo. Is oh that my it? fucking! <laughs> it's okay, Alric. My mom calls me Sunlight. Both of my parents call me Sunlight all the time. See, your uh... your parents seem very reasonable. <laughs> I love them very much. Good. And you never complain when they use nicknames? Uh, okay. well. Look, we're getting, Ulrich takes the bucket from his dad's hands and goes, I'll meet you guys outside. <laughs> oh. And he so. briskly walks towards the cows. <laughs> so. Oh, God. The three of you, you make your way to the edge of town. Fiore, while they're walking, he's like, I'm sorry, I was trying to help. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. I really do. <laughs> I think you understand the hood now. Yes, I do. I was wondering what was going on. You and Silk kept staring at each other. Is that obvious? I had no Incredibly. idea. What we... I thought you might be. <laughs> I thought you might be telepathically communicating. <laughs> Alric lifts the bucket so that way it's like the the like the wall of it is like touching his forehead. He's hiding and cringing behind it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I'm not judging. And I, for the record, I really don't care if you have a silly nickname with your family. <sighs> That's... Thank you. At least it's cute. <laughs> it is pretty cute. <laughs> okay, what about those cows? <laughs> <laughs> and he walks a lot faster. <laughs> Walking alongside you, by the way, is Jala Highstepper, who said, who's like, I think is a perfectly decent nickname. Uh, Jala, please not you too. <laughs> you get to the edge of town, and off on the horizon, there they are. The cows. Oh, God. They're all Cortos Highland cows, so you know, big, shaggy boys with like, yes. uh, like fringes, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I like oh, them. Babies. And they're all kind of like looking around a little suspiciously. They've been milked before, and now they're on the defensive. <laughs> I, okay, this needs to end. This bit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Would you guys like to go try milk these cattle? Yeah, I mean, Fiore will definitely try. Okay. Jala uh, takes out a pocket watch, clicks it, and says, Your time starts now! Five minutes! And everyone, the way this is going to work is you guys are going to either roll nature, survival, or athletics. Or if you have another thing you think you can use instead, we'll use that. So, you will roll three times, taking the average of all of your results, and then combining them. If you get 50 points combined, you will get third place. If you get 55, you'll get second place. And if you get 60 points combined, you will get first place. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, everyone, what role are you going to use to try milk these cattle. <laughs> uh, Ulrich, I think, is going to go with nature. Okay, so Ulrich, you're the one going for the udder and doing the actual milking, right? Yeah. Okay. Ulrich, that's you. Silk, what are you going to do? Um... You can you can justify anything to me. I was going to cast Persistent Minion. Okay, what's Persistent Minion? Um... It's an old friend of the new uh, uh, can of paint. Uh, you call forth mm -hmm. uh, a phantasmal minion and task it mm. to perform a specific chore repeatedly. Uh, previously called Unseen Servant, right? Yes. My favorite okay. kind of spell. I love I yes. loved Unseen Servant. I was going to say, uh, repeated action could be milking, uh, but... Could... <laughs> 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 Silk, has, Silk has learned the milking spell. That's what I was saying. This is the milking spell. Okay. So maybe, Ulrich, you're trying to relax the cow as the milking creature comes closer <laughs> to them. Yeah, I was going to say, it milker. could also wave some fucking wheat or something. True. I love my I think craft. it's funnier if it milks, though. <laughs> um, okay. So... <laughs> I think, Silk, you are casting this on the way down because it takes one minute to cast. And you're not going to waste one minute of your precious yeah. time here. The Phantasmal Minion spawns invisibly next to you as you're waving your hands around, and it stands beside you. 
So I will want you to roll me an arcana on this, okay? Okay. And Fiore. Uh huh. What are you doing with this cow? I think athletics, like he's trying to physically help, like stop the cow from moving enough to milk or something. <laughs> okay. So Fiore, you grab the cow. Alric, you reassure it, and then the milking smell begins. No, <laughs> As the phantasmal <laughs> minion just very, like, in fairness, it does not see, it's more preoccupied with Fiore than kicking Dominion, I think. So, and you're going to do this to as many cows around as possible. Um, well. So, I want all of you, with your first round, to roll me Athletics, Arcana, and Nature. So, with an 18, a 16, and a 16, uh, that is going to be an average result of... That is going to be 16.6. That's 17 total. You earn 17 points on your first round. It works! The the cow does do d- does get milked, although it's quite startled by Fiore lunging and grabbing its flank, and it is probably trying to wrestle you off, but it's not wrestling off the phantasmal minion who is milking it. And it's Ulrich, you're like, it's okay, it's okay, I'm sorry about this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the cow moves. How are you guys doing? Um, Silk is great. He's standing off in the distance, far away, <laughs> not getting dirty. <laughs> Fury is focusing really hard right now. Mm-hmm. It kicks at you, Fury. It's like, ow. <laughs> no, ow. <laughs> <laughs> Ulrich is usually pretty good with animals. Uh, so he's doing his best to calm the cow down. It's okay. It's okay. We're not gonna hurt you. Just... just... I know. I know. I'm sorry that this is going on. But this... You can kick the other contestants. It's fine. It kicks Fiore. No, not... I said other, (gasps) not us. Hey, hey, oh. calm down. No, no, I said other contestants. We are a team. This is my partner, Fiore. Mm-hmm. It, everything, it, it's, everything's fine. Everything's fine. My shins. Meanwhile, I'm underneath, so sorry. milk, 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 milk. It's actually filling up okay. <laughs> uh, let's roll it again. Let's see if you're able to continue up your streak. Okay. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Fiora, you fucking hold the next... Like, this cow, like, eventually wrestles away. Fiora, you are holding the next cow down. Um, well, uh, Fiora was built for farming, I guess. Your total average this turn is 19.6. That's 20. Bring you up to 37. Awesome. You guys grab another cow, this one even bigger and fuzzier, and it goes... As Fiora fucking grabs it by the front and holds it. Come on. What, how's this going, Fiora? How do you grab this cow? I think he's trying to keep his feet on the ground and his arms sort of around around the neck. Not to hurt, but to just be like, stay, just stay, just just stay. I promise. Episode one of Abomination Vaults. There's something strange in the swamp. Episode four of Abomination Vaults. Cow wrestling! <laughs> <laughs> um, Silk, how are you doing? You still off in the distance, not giving the fuck? He smirks. He's just watching these two. He's having a good time. He thinks they're both kind of cute. Okay. Ooh, he, he's boy watching right now. <laughs> I think when Fury did get kicked out one time, he was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ouch. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Ulrich, what do you do? I guess I'm just more so trying to soothe this one a bit more. Very hard the way Fiore's roughhousing it. <laughs> I, you're, you're doing your best, but Fiore, you have to admit, actually, as you step back, you're like, holy shit, Fiore's like, being the sh- like holding the shit down out of this cow. My god. This is a feral fucking cow, jeez. <laughs> He's like, well, moody, you too. Damn. And with your last time, let's see, you need to get 13 points this round to win any prize. I believe in us. Okay, Fiore, I think you continue wrestling this first cow for a while, maybe a little too long, you don't realize that the Phantasmal Minion has left, and Ulrich, you have rushed it to the last cow, and at this point, you hear Jada Highstepper being like, one minute left! So you were like, have to reassure this cow, it looks at you, it stares, it sees that its friends, its its sisters are a little uh, on edge, 
and it's looking at you suspiciously and goes, Moo. No, hey, hey. And Elric puts both hands up. He's like, it's okay. I'm mm-hmm. gonna hurt you at all. Um, mm-hmm. I, I will give you fresh grass after Ooh. this. Like, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I will give you and your siblings some fresh grass after all of this, completely from our farm in the vineyard. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And then you hear milk, 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 milk happening underneath. It is, it's being milked. It's going well. <laughs> um, and with that, you add an additional 18 points to your ting, making your final score 55. Yippee. You guys don't get first place for the day. That, I think, probably goes to Jetta herself, because she did take part. <laughs> of course. But you do get the second amount, amount, second most amount of milk for the day. And uh, when you get back to the, the farm, uh, Jetta says, Fantastic work, everyone. That's most impressive. That's not an easy feat with wild cattle in five minutes with a magic invisible creature. Which, by the way, Silk, Persistent Minion does last the entire day. So you just got this body with you. Oh, yeah. It carried the milk back for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pail is like floating uh, yeah. in, in the middle of everyone. Yeah, Jetta gives it a look like, hmm. Either way, very well done. For your trouble, each of you gets five gold. So everyone add five gold to your sheets. Thank you. My. Thank you. <laughs> Honest work. Well, if you ever feel like milking some more cows, we have ones that aren't wild and do need milking quite often. Uh, noted. If you ever need help, just let me know. Of course. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of the festival. See you at the play later. See you. See you there. Margella. You exp- exchange some more pleasantries with your parents, uh, Ulrich, who is very, they're very proud of all the milk you got. They <laughs> say they knew you were a farm boy at heart. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But eventually, the tree of you continue making your way through the Founders Festival festivities. Dice Will Roll will return after these messages. We now return to Dice Will Roll. So, where to now, guys? Where would you like to see? Uh, what do you guys feel like doing? I feel like we have a lot of options right now. Hmm. Too many to do in one day. Uh, what about... What about that... That that bookstore? You like books, right? Oh, Silk Lights Up. Uh... I was... <laughs> Fiori in his head is like, I was right. I love that store. Me and the owner are best friends. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ulrich raises an eyebrow. <laughs> Would you guys like to go to Odd Stories? Absolutely. I was a fucking loot <laughs> You guys make your way to Odd Stories. And sitting at a little uh, table outside with many books, uh, many of them are his own, is Morlabant. And Morlabant sees you coming, Silk, and says, Oh, no. <laughs> Hello. Maury, good tidings. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that was, that was Not even action. on Founder's Day. Not even on Founder's Day <laughs> can you give me a day off. Can you really complain about seeing me? Yes, quite loudly, even. And often. <laughs> Ulrich's eyebrows are very much raised. He's like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I thought I'd get a warm welcome on this the day. Fiori turn, like, like, sort of like leans towards Ulrich and quietly is like, I, was gonna say, I thought he said he was his best friend. I had a feeling something was off when he said that. <laughs> Uh, Silk's, like, leaned over the table, like, palm, like, on the, like, edge of it. Absolutely bothering the shit out of Morlblunt. You're bothering the shit out of me right now. I know. If you're going to take space here, at least do the challenge that myself and my husband have set up. Oh, you've got a challenge? Where is he? Oh, he's off having fun. Left me to take care of the stall. Which means I don't have to be polite to you, you (sighs) impetuous slut. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh. <laughs> what the fuck? He says it with a coy smile. <laughs> Silk looks playfully offended. He's like mouth agape. And he's like, oh, <gasps> well. The catty gays are committing acts of violence against one each other. <laughs> gay on gay be a crime. a good challenge if you're going to insult me like that. Well, it's one that I don't expect a dim wit like you to be able to overcome. Oh. We'll see about that. I have ten riddles. Each riddle, I will give you ten seconds to reply to. Make sense? Perfect. Yeah. 
Okay. All of you okay. can chip in, and you will get uh, rewards depending on your total score. All right? Okay. Sure. Excellent. Shall we begin? Sure. All right. Bring it on. Well, he leans back a little bit. And I'm going to open a real-life timer. Oh, God. And let's begin. And remember, you guys just shout out the answer if you come up with it. Okay. Mm. Riddle number one. The more you take, the more you leave behind. Time starts now. Footsteps? Very good. All right. That's one out of ten. Next one. Forward I am heavy, but backwards I am not. And the timer starts now. (laughs) Silk doesn't know. (laughs) Oh. Oh. A ton. Very good. Two out of ten. Great work. (laughs) Okay. Next question. How much dirt is in a circular hole four feet deep and two feet wide? Starting now. None. Oh. Correct. Well done. You three are on fire. That's three out of ten. Uh, Yeah. Three. (laughs) Next, we have, and he's like reading through some paper, all about the house with his lady he dances, yet always he works and never romances. What am I? A broom? Yes! Well done! Well caught! That's four out of ten. I'm starting to wonder if I made these too easy. Uh, Uh, Next one. Easy. Where... (laughs) <laughs> Fiora, you're suddenly here like uh, uh. <laughs> Fiora, you're not really a riddle guy, right? Fiora Fiora likes studying and stuff But he likes studying religion And hmm. how awesome Saren Ray is <laughs> Question five Where can you find roads without carts Forests without trees And cities without houses Starting now Oh Oh. A map very good! Five out of ten! Goodness, you haven't gotten one wrong yet. That's incredible. I really did make this too easy. <laughs> well, I suppose they're designed for children. Arc squints at <laughs> this man. <laughs> Let's see. Number six. What is put on a table, cut and shared, but never eaten? Starting now. Oh, uh, Fiori's like, um, a deck of cards? Oh, yes, that is correct. Uh, well, these next ones are going to be very difficult, I'm sure. And uh, Morlobint pulls out another card and says, What is always coming, but never arrives? The future? Curse you. Well, then, let's see. At night, I come without being fetched. At day, I am lost without being stolen. At the moon. Oh, yes, that is correct. Goodness, are you going to get a, a solid 10 out of 10? That's never happened before. Maybe. Um... Number nine. What is so fragile that speaking its name will break it? Silence. Oh, my God. You are jumping down my back, (laughs) Mr. Sunchaser. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Goodness. Finally, he who makes me doesn't want me. He who buys me doesn't use me. And he who uses me doesn't know me. What am I? A coffin. Morlebent looks up at you, tree throws his cards down and discusses. I really do need to write some better ones. That, my friends, is a solid 10 out of 10 and I am flummoxed. Yay! Positively flummoxed. I've never seen someone do that. Not even even my Calta had a difficult time. That's very impressive, everyone. Uh, well, if it means anything, I had no idea what the answers to the ones that I didn't answer were. <laughs> well, everyone, why don't you all take, and he gives you all a few tokens, uh, and a few like little knickknacks, which you can all sell for ten gold. Thank you. And you call me dim-witted. Well, perhaps I underestimated you, Silk Witchhelm. It seems your companions are rubbing mm-hmm. off on you. Maybe you ought to pay more attention to them. Maybe you ought to save the little hair you have left. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> John <laughs> drops. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know that male pattern baldness is a serious issue. (laughs) Not even magic can solve it. We're just staring at the clouds. Get well soon. (laughs) I shan't. That's quite (laughs) real. That is quite truthfully the problem, isn't it now? Hmm. It is. (laughs) 
Well, the rest of you have some have fun with the rest of your time out. Thank you. You too. Thank you, sir. So, see you later, Maury. He scoffs. He likes it. He enjoys the presents. <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when, when they're walking away, Fury's like, I thought you said you were best friends. Uh, we are. What do you mean? We spent most of that time insulting each other. Oh. Is that not what you do? What? <laughs> he just blinks at Silk. It's playful. I don't understand what you mean. Do you ever have a little fault. fun with your friends? Most of my friends uh, are clerics and people that work at the temple. <laughs> not the crowd then, I suppose. They're playful, just not in that way. Well, where are you guys headed now? All right, do you want to pick next? Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, Rin's shop is nearby. Do you want to pay her visit, maybe? Oh, yeah, we could do that. Of course. Okay. Frantically and looking could... around, picking a place. Uh, <laughs> and you can also fill her in on how everything went. True, so, we haven't seen her guys... yet. Yeah. You guys want to go visit Rin's Wonders? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys make your way into Rin's Wonders, that strange circular tent, sitting at a table inside with a beautiful carpet thrown over it and many knickknacks on it, is Rin herself. And Rin, she looks up and says, Welcome to Rin's... Oh! Well, if it isn't you three, hello, you came back! Hi. How are you all doing? Really good. Really, really good. Wonderful. Wonderful indeed. So... Let me guess. You found the source of the strange glow, is it? Yes, we have a little bit. I still saw it last night when I looked through my telescope, so I must assume it is not quite fixed yet. No. Not fixed. It's is... perhaps something that we don't quite understand. That place is way oh. bigger than I thought it would be. Oh? So what? Ha what was there? It's... It looks like it's the ruins of the place where the founders of Otari had their last battle. The found Oh, is that what this festival thing is for, yes? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Huh. <laughs> How long have you been here again? I just moved here maybe a year ago. I'm not very used to all of this. Well, then, yes, that's what this is all about. Well, I thank you all very much for doing your quest. And I have prizes to thank you just the same. Because you did complete some of Quest, at least. Even if you did not stop the big light, we at least know what it is, and that is what I wanted to know. Quest, quest complete. complete. A, light A light in the, in the fog. fog. And she's going to give each of you another 10 gold. Hooray! And you each get one talisman. So, first off, there is a jade cat. It is a thumb-sized feline carved of stone. Anyone who is war uh, trained in acrobatics, who is about to fall or make an acrobatics check to balance, uh, can treat falls as 20 feet shorter. Fiora, you're the only one trained in acrobatics. The reason being is that you are you have the ruined delver background, so you're quite used to um, entering ruins and maybe stumbling around a bit. Oh, You've yeah. got a good sense of balance. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll take it. But this would help to you. Let's drop that into your inventory. Uh, next, we have an onyx panther. This beautiful black pebble is sculpted into a stylized panther shape. When you activate it, you have a plus one item bonus to sneak, and you can move at your full speed instead of half. So, who wants to be real good at sneaking? These are all consumable items you can use once, so they're just a little bit of extra fun. Would you like that, Luna? Uh, I'll probably, I could probably take that one, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. You've got an onyx pendant. And finally... The last item is... Sorry. You got... Uh, yeah, whatever. And finally, the last item is a crying angel pendant. When you activate this alabaster pendant, attempt to, attempt to administer first aid using medicine with a plus one item bonus to the check. If you succeed and you are trying to stabilize, the target regains one hit point, losing the dying condition and becoming conscious as normal. If you succeed and you are trying Ooh. to stop bleeding, the bleeding ends. So, Silk, it's only very good that. There you go. Give me that. <laughs> and Rin smiles and says, Now, while you are here, perhaps I can interest you in one of my services. I will do it for free because you are my friends and I like you. I like you all very much. Oh. 
Um, what are your services again? Oh, well, I can tell you your fortune with the power of the Harrow. And she <gasps> pulls out a deck of cards. Interested? And she kind of flicks through them. Um, These cards, each of which have an illustration on the front, they will tell your future. They will tell you of things to come, things that are happening, and things that have already happened. I will tell your fe- future as a group, and we will see what is to come, what is happening, and what has already come to be. Are you interested, friends? I'd be delighted. Sure. Yeah, sure. Give it a go. So, she smiles, and she pulls out her Harrow deck. I told you that I got a cool module. <gasps> oh my oh, god! Shit. Oh, Dude. shit. Oh my god. It's the whole Harrow... Oh my... It's, this is oh, so shit. fucking cool. It's the Harrow rulebook? Uh, not just the Harrow rulebook. It is every single card with new illustrations. Oh my god! <gasps> Yes! Yes! Rin puts out three stacks of cards after shuffling the deck. She says, Each of these decks of cards will reveal the past, the present, and the future. You will draw each one from each deck. Who would like to draw from the past first? Uh, Well, if no one else is going to. Okay, Silk. She splits that past deck into three more decks. Would you like to see the good past, the evil past, or the present? The good past, the evil past, or the neutral past? Let's go with the neutral. Okay. And you pull a card from the deck. And that card is the vision. The card depicted shows a man. He is uh, clearly a crafter, but he stands with his hands splayed out, the tools he carries dropped as his eyes open wide and glow with energy as lightning zaps into his brain from the heavens. Rin looks and says, Ah, the vision. This is the neutral card of intelligence, representing obscure or supernatural lore. Such knowledge can take the form of visions or cryptic worlds. This card often means an encounter with an inscrutable person, but it can also signify a brush with genius. So what I think this means is, in the past, someone here noticed something strange. Ha! Maybe that is me, sending you on your quest. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to draw next? Uh, I could go. Alright. Would you like from the good past or the evil past? Uh, good. Hmm. And she draws a card, and that card is... The Beating. It shows a man standing with his back to a tree. Uh, A red sun glows in the sky above, and the sky is dark. Surrounding him on all sides are shadowy figures clearly looking to hurt him. Ah, the beating. Usually this is considered a bad omen. An attack coming from all sides. The dissolution of the self mentally. Now, what this means, however... Uh, You pulled it in the good past, so rather than meaning it happened to you, it happened to your foes. You did recently have some victories in the ruins, yes? We did. Well, this is a a sign that you have indeed done well. Most impressive, adventurers. Shall we pull next deck? Yeah, I I suppose. Oh, let's see. Just because this is evil past does not mean it is bad thing that that will curse you. It is more information about something bad that has already happened. Pull, my friend. Uh, Okay. And the card you pull, Ulrich, is the Tyrant. We see a terrifying blue-scaled dragon roar as he clutches a bloody egg. Mm Hmm. That is most concerning. The Tyrant is, um, a ruler who is a blight upon those ruled. Or someone whose control is toxic to those that they should be caring for. Uh, It often indicates a monarch, an overseer, uh, a a great master. Whoever this person is, they do harm to those over whom they hold sway, whether they realize it or not. Most troubling. She kind of bites her lower lip. It means that some great evil happened long ago, 
and now it is relevant again. Hmm. Well, let us not dwell on it. What next? I would advise you don't pull from the same deck again. If you chose good, neutral, or evil, change it this time. And she pulls out the next deck, splits, and tree. Who would like to go first, and which shall you pull from? Can I just say, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's... (laughs) I think it's really fun that Silk pulled the card that's literally in his head. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the vision is in Silk's hat along with the desert. No way. That's great. Yeah, fucking way. I had to, like, check again on our fucking character reference sheet, and I was like, oh, fuck. Hmm. Um, Silk will pull again. Okay. Which will you pull? Good, evil, or neutral? I'm feeling evil. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, She lets you pull, and the card you pull... The demon's lantern. A veiny hand pushes out of the earth. Behind it, a tree has fallen. And in the sky, tree green, red, and blue lights shine. This card is the card of traps and tricks. A sleight of hand and a sleight of mind. The glowing orbs represent worlds of opportunity used to lure one into peril. Most unnerving. Hmm. There are... Dangerous lights in the fog fan right lately. One must be careful not to follow them, although perhaps you already are following a light. Who next? Who pulls next? Alric, maybe you this time so you don't get you don't get stuck? Okay. Um I'll choose good this time. Okay. Let us see. And she pulls the next card, and the card you get is Ah, that is good. The survivor. And the card uh, shows a knight in armor, arrows poking out of his back as he sits upon a treasure chest, his sword clutched as he rests. He has endured great injuries, and yet he fights on. Ah, this represents a person who has been through an ordeal of some kind. Surrounded by fallen comrades, the figure represents someone or something taught lost forever, but found once more. Interesting. One must wonder. Maybe soon you will meet someone who has endured a great evil. Maybe. Mr. Sunchaser. And she holds out the neutral present to you. Uh, Fury kind of smiles uh, a little and... Uh, picks out a card. Also, the survivor, uh, I'm pretty sure it has an artichoke on it. Yeah, there's a random artichoke yeah. on it. I don't know what that's about. Tasty. <laughs> Delicious. Oh. Well, that is most curious, she says, as you pull your card. The Hidden Truth. A particularly flummoxed <gasps> wizard points at a spell book that is open. He looks at the viewer with wide, almost comical eyes and an expression of true surprise from his finger fire churns. Ah, this card shows the ability to see past the obvious and the banal to a greater truth within. Sometimes this card, this is a discovery of an esoteric nature, other times a literal find, such as an item revealed within a room. The hidden truth. Well, that would mean that you are going to come upon some great secret in the near future. You think so? That is what the cards say, my friend. Now, Finally, the cards which mean the most. The future. Your cards have already been chosen for you. Silk, you will take the good future. And she holds out the deck for you. Thank you. He pulls one. Ha! The locksmith, a strange man with a green robe, holds up his hand, each finger, a key. This card presents the subject with the keys you need to unlock your destiny. You will find the tools to access a new location, a clue, a treasure. There is no insight into how or where these tools will be granted. In the future, you will be opening many doors, it would seem. Hmm. The neutral future, she turns to you, Ulrich. You must pull. Okay. And he pulls a card out. Oh no. The Fiend. And on the card, Ulrich, you are faced with a massive red devil with black horns and spikes coming down his back. Awful green eyes. And in his maw, he is devouring a tortured innocent, picking up more from the piles of bodies beneath him as miasma glows in the background. Well, 
this card, it indicates the deaths of many in a great calamity. Uh, the fiend can indicate that a sinister or intelligent creature is in your future, endangering the populace. It would seem that something, some great and dangerous power, may harm you. Or, since this is neutral, it may aid you, but be careful how you trust it. And lastly, she turns to you, Fiore. How are you doing, bud? I'm a little anxious. <laughs> he's all... He's it all must be shifty. drawn, Fiore. Uh... It is already determined. And she holds out the last mini deck. The evil future. Okay. <laughs> Easily. I'm just going to pick it. Then he picks it without looking at it. You turn the card over, and she immediately pales. Oh, no. Uh, did I do something? Oh, this is bad. What? This is very bad. And the card you have pulled, the Eclipse. <gasps> it portrays Armageddon, the end of the world. A full solar eclipse blackens the sky and meteors crash down. Fire erupts from the ground on all sides. And the poor damned innocents, they are already dead as they stand. Their eyes hollowed out and glowing golden as they cower. This is the worst card you can pull. I didn't mean to. It is not you. It is fate. This is much more serious than I had imagined. This card represents self-doubt and a loss of power. It will afflict fate, symbolizing how powers and convictions can falter under great distress. It can also indicate a loss of way along a path. This would mean something terrible is coming to your futures. And she looks up all of you. A little grim. May the cosmic caravan have mercy on your souls. Uh, well, thank you, Rin. The future is already written, but it can be unwritten. Prophecy is fickle. You can pull on its strings and change the pattern entirely. Make the future what you shall make of it. And then she sweeps those cards up and says, Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Sure. How are you guys fucking <laughs> feeling as you sit back? Auric is tugging at his hood. <laughs> so it feels bad that Fiori had to do that one. Fiori is just trying to cope. Are you going to go enjoy the rest of the festival? Still plenty of time. Uh, oh. Yes. Yeah, of course. Mm. Oh. Well. Um, hmm? Rin, before, we, yes? before I forget, uh, there was a inscription in um, an abandoned, I would say, study outside the lighthouse. Oh, most interesting. Mm. Show it to me, show it to me. I'll take a look. Uh, he t he brings out his bag and uh, takes out the paper that he scratched the uh, chalk over mm. with the imprint on it. Um, it was under a portrait of the sorceress, the one from the Rose God's last adventure. Hmm. Well, she looks down at that and she looks a little concerned. Says, oh, well, that is not good. You understand it? Yes, I would speak the language, but it is a language that one must usually not hope to see just out and about. Oh? It is, um... What is it? It is, is um... It? Aklo, language of outer gods, of great evil from beyond stars, yes? Oh. Language of Necronomicon and other unholy books, yes? What? Yogg-Sothoth. Uh, oh, I should tell you what it says, yes. And she looks down at it, and she reads. Ah, it's not very long. It simply says, um... <clears throat> I serve you still. You shall be avenged. Ulrich's eyes light up, but in a bad way. <sighs> the wizard. The, the, the one that... The one that... Uh, that Mr. Beak? Mr. Beak. <laughs> the one that served... <laughs> <stopped. laughs> The one that served the sorceress. Oh no. Oh god. Oh god. This. There are things starting to come together about this place. One more thing. Yes. There's a haunt going on in there. Oh? We found blood in the tower under the lights. Uh huh. It looked fresh, but it, it wasn't. It, it. Uh huh. It seemed like the person who died there should have been dead for a long time uh -huh. but the bl but the blood pool is still fresh uh-huh do you know anything about 
clearing any haunts such as that. I don't know, that sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, well, oh. uh, so we'll have figure it out on our own then. Uh, uh, very sorry. Um, no worries. I, I was just wondering if you had any indication. We well, there's I, also... I know lots of things about lots of things. I know about abominations. I know about things from beyond the stars. The hounds, of course. Can the hounds? The, the, the corner hounds? Okay. <laughs> yes, the, from the corners. The hounds, they come from the corners. That's why there's I, no yes, corners in here. Yeah, yeah, yes, Even yes. this desk, see? I have I, it, see, no right angles on this desk. And indeed, it is oh a God, very like weirdly a shaped circle. Rounded out desk. desk. Oh my God. No, like even under the desk, there's no right angles. <laughs> oh, good I, God. I, I didn't even, heard even notice that. Well if, well, if there were corners, the hounds could come from it. So they don't. I'm very smart, you see. Very, I'm smart girl. But no, I don't know much about exorcisms. I could ask my parents. That sounds like a good plan. That could work. Sounds good. Well, I I hope this has not ruined your Founders Day festival. Oh, no. It's okay. No, it's just more to think about. Like you said, fate is fickle. You you guys, you do well, okay? You kids, take care. You come back to Rin any time you want your fortunes read. I will read you my for- your fortunes for free. So you come back any time you need. Rin always has your back. Okay? Thank you. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. Have a great day. Love you. Bye. Uh, thank <laughs> you. Bye-bye. Kisses. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> She's not moving from her desk. <laughs> Pior is like, Let, <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> I love her. How are you guys doing as you go outside back into the festival? It's very strange to come back into the festival after like that whole encounter. Like the f- cold air on your mm-hmm. skin. There's a little stuffy in there, honestly. Well, that was fun. Uh, that is definitely one of the things that happened. <laughs> <clears throat> Certainly something. That was weird. Well, Don't worry <laughs> too much about it. Chances are that was your last time going into that dungeon anyway. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you were any anyone else other than the guy who's obsessed with dungeons. Well, by now, I think you guys uh, can see that people are starting to get ready for the play. Mm-hmm. You guys could go do some other stuff, but honestly, it might be an idea to just head on down, see that play, and see what's happening for the rest of the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Okay. It's fine. So... You guys make your way down to the play. Um, And I think as you're going, your party is briefly stopped by the town guard. So a few of these guys get like kind of stand in the road and they kind of like hail each stop. And two of the guards, one of them waves and uh, he says, oh, hi guys. Um, And uh, I think you guys might know him from around town. That guy's name is Budrick Wallemeyer. This is a silly name. His name tells you everything you want, need to know about him. Hi, guys. You having a good time at the festival? <laughs> sure. Are. And then stepping out uh-huh. from behind him, before you can all even answer that, is an imperious looking man. Oh, fuck. He is maybe 70 years old. Oh, my. He is very tall, maybe six foot three. He is angry looking brows and an extremely impressive pair of mutton chops and a big tick mustache and uh, he's got like little uh, shoulder lapels you know he looks like even if you didn't know that this is the captain of the guard you would guess it and he steps in front of Budrick who goes oh sorry sir and the man says well 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 I hope you're all enjoying the festivities and this, you guys know, is the head of the Otari Garrison, which is the combination guard, firefighters, and lawyers of Otari. He is in charge of all of them, and his name is Captain Longsaddle. <laughs> Captain Longsaddle <laughs> is infamous. Well, he's actually a veteran from Absalom, the capital city nearby. Oh. He was apparently a big deal back there, but he quote-unquote retired to Atari a decade ago. His curse-laden tirades are legendary, 
and he's inclined to issue short jail sentences for minor infractions. And he stands in the way, and you guys have no fucking idea why he stopped you. Would you all like to make a perception check, though? Yes. <laughs> sure. Ulrich, you catch something. So you were just like, who is this? What's this douchebag want from us? But Ulrich, you catch something. Fiore stands up straight and clenches his jaw, which is a weird reaction for a champion of the cause of justice to have with a, a figure of authority. Uh, he chooses not to pry in this situation, but he, he brings the attention to him for once, saying, uh, sir, is there something wrong? He doesn't even look at you, my man. He is staring right at Mr. Sunchaser. <laughs> so, I hope you've all been enjoying the festivities. Yeah. Uh, y- yes, uh, sir. It's been lovely. Not causing any trouble, are we? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Should we be? Why would we, cause, why would we cause any trouble? You shouldn't be unless you'd like to spend the night in a cold and damp cell. Can't say I'd love that. Well, that's good. That is the appropriate reaction to hearing that threat. One must remember to always follow the rules, lest you be punished. Like, whoa, okay. As you can see, we've done quite a good job keeping the streets safe during this whole festival, haven't we now? Um, yes. Uh, everything seems to be going as well as a festival can. Mm-hmm. One might even say that the Atari Garrison are doing perfectly fine. I need no help from vigilantes. Vig- vigilant. I heard okay. you were off exploring ruins nearby recently. It was Is a- that what you heard? Indeed. And while that's all well and good, assuming it is a historical expedition, one must remember not to fucking try to do my fucking job. Do we have an understanding? Um, <clears throat> yes, sir, but, um... You see anything strange in there, boy? He puts a fat finger under your chin, as uh, Ulrich. You see anything untowards in there? You tell the Otari garrison, and the Otari garrison will get to it in due time. We'll let you know if anything happens, if you want to do your job. He turns slowly towards you, Fiore, says... Good. That's the way it ought to be, shouldn't it? It should. Well, I'm very glad that we are on the same page, boy. Oh, I'm sure we are. Make your way towards the school of play. They've tried, they've been doing such hard work making the town a better place by following the rules. Good day to you all. And uh, Wallemeyer says, uh, yeah, ha- have, a, have a great time. He says, not now, Wallemeyer, this way. Says, All right, sorry, bye-bye now. Have a good day, Wallemeyer. It's good to see you. Bye. And with that, uh, Captain Longsaddle struts off. You guys are left with each other for As a soon as Longsaddle's out of earshot, Silka's like, what a cunt. Quite. I've never really enjoyed his demeanor. F- Fiore, mm? are you all right? I'm fine. I respect when he does his job. <laughs> when? <laughs> the cause of justice is code. You must respect <laughs> authority. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I and... see. Um. Well, uh, let me know if there's anything you would need regarding that man. Uh, Fury, how are you doing, buddy? He's pissed off right now. <laughs> 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 Respect Fiore. does not mean a like in the slightest. No, it never does. <laughs> um, Silk so has no idea what's going on. So, what now? To the play? We do a little jig together. <laughs> sure. Well, after those pleasantries, let's let's go to the play. <laughs> sure. So you guys make your way to the play, and by now a lot of the town has gathered, and. Indeed, you all kind of sit down, you take your seats, and um, the mayor stands up and addresses uh, the crowd. And this is your first time seeing the mayor, right, guys? Like, you haven't seen his art yet? Uh, I don't I, think I, I have. 
Don't think uh, we've seen his art yet, no. Spell it out for me. D-A-D-D-Y. Damn. Oh, sh- oh. Okay. Yes. A very handsome man stands at the top of the stage. Uh, he is, uh, I would say, in his 50s. Mm. Although he's aging a little more than that. Seems like it. His He is a dark-skinned man. Um with uh, black hair and a beard, which has been peppered with silver. Um, he's a very still, like, kind of stern-looking face, but not in a cruel way, more in a, like, almost a teacherly way, you know? Hmm. Um, like, his, his, you can see his stress lines creased into him. Yeah. <laughs> he wears a golden cloak, a green shirt, uh, and he carries, uh, like, Lots of notes and little bags around him. He is very, very handsome. This, of course, is Mayor Osef Amenhims, the mayor of Otari for the last long, long time, and the direct descendant of Asafana Amenhims, the huntress of the Rose Guard. And he stands on the stage and he calls out and says, Good afternoon, everyone. Citizens of Otari, thank you all very much for coming to this very special play. As you all know, it is the 500th anniversary of our great town. And to celebrate, we have uh, commissioned a play from our local artist, Mr. Morlebent Wonderbrook, our local novelist and playwright from Odd Stories. And there's a little bit of a clap that goes through the crowd, and you do see Morlebent uh, very snugly smiling. Mm. The student from Zarmavdian School for Gifted Children, which, by the way, you all know is all children in town. <laughs> it's not a very big school either. Like maybe a hundred students, or uh, maybe a hundred, 150 kids. A lot of them don't even go to school. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's medieval times. Uh, you know that Zarmavdian School for Gifted Children <laughs> is mostly staffed by clerics from uh, the Donaldflower Temple and a few, like, volunteers around town. Um, Mm. The students from Zamavdian School for Gifted Children will be putting on a play today, The Legend of the Rose Guard. Thank you all very much for watching, and we hope you enjoy. And he steps back, and the crowd claps as the play begins. And the play does go pretty nicely. You have a few kids come out onto the stage, one by one, acting out their roles. You've got, uh, like, uh, a little scrawny kid is pl- playing Otari Ilvanashti as he uh, kind of, like, narrates his little story, you know? Then you've got, like, a uh, mm. kind of, like, a dwarven boy um, who is playing uh, Zarmavdian himself, holding, like, a big, big school book as a prop, you know? <laughs> and, uh, like, you hear him being, like, I hold in my hands the threshold of truth, the greatest grimoire to ever exist. And the cloud goes, woo. Um, and then like uh, uh, a big, a big, strong looking girl comes out and she is holding a real fucking sword. God. <laughs> and that real sword is actually a sword that Fiora, you know about very well, because this is the Rosa Auri. The scimitar, the golden rose that belonged to Volrajani. This is the actual artifact. Um, it is being used in this play. Uh, what you do know is that Ro- Vol always used the Rosa Ari. It was her like signature weapon. But it took on an extra meaning in her old age when she founded the Dawnflower Temple. It took a lot of convincing for Rumina to let it be used as a prop. But they said they would be respectful. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then, playing the role of Asa Fanamanhins, is a little girl, uh, maybe 10 years old, uh, who looks the spitting image of that woman. Likely because uh, you guys know that that's Doriana Memhins, Osef Memhins' daughter his only daughter, and therefore direct descendant from Asafana. Actually, I have art of her, if I can find it. Would you like to see her? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm like imagining Morlabint on a fucking school piano, just like jingling along. Oh, Morlabint is not the one playing, but Carlt is. Yes. And Morlabint is sitting beside him and looking very smug. He's like, yes, my oh. excellent play. I truly <laughs> thought that you said Morla Blunt. I was like, damn. Wig. He is always high. That's true. There we go. This is Doriana. Oh, she's baby. I love her. I love her. I love her. Oh my god, she's just a little kid. Just a small child. She is very young. She's like, she's by far the youngest student taking power of this play. Um, and she is holding <laughs> a bow and arrow. And she's trying to look as serious as possible. Um, almost too serious. Far more serious than a child ever would. But she's taking to that role. She's, by the way, probably the best actor of the group. You very quickly notice. Cute. Um, and the play goes on. And you know what? It's all right. Very <laughs> much so written for children. Baldo, maybe that's not the best excuse. There's a couple <laughs> of factual inaccuracies. Sometimes you think Morland maybe just made stuff up. But you know what? It's entertaining. And that's what matters. Oh, no. <gasps> Halfway true. While she's standing in the back, calamity happens to dear Doriana. No. She's fiddling with the bow. She's not a main part of this scene, but she's fiddling with the bow. And the bowstring snaps. <gasps> and her eyes widen. And then her, and she looks like she might cry. Oh, God. No one Did else seems to have her? noticed yet. No, she was just fucking around with it. And I think it like, it's not like a tightly strung bow. It's more like she just, she like okay. broke it. And it just fell apart, and now she's got a broken bow in the middle of an important show. Um, it doesn't look like anyone else has noticed. What do you guys do? Oh my god, wait, I still have my I still have my phantasmal minion. You do, but what are you gonna do with him? Wait, can I make can I make him hold the string up so it looks like it's not broken? I don't think so, man. Oh what if Alric gave her his bow? <laughs> Alric wants to give her his bow? Like, like, lend it to her for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, he turns to Silk and goes, Hey, you still have that servant? You still have the minion? Uh, yes. Here. And he takes it, he takes his longbow off and he says, Let you have your minion give this to her. <laughs> okay. Uh, Silk does just that. Okay. Well, you make your way, go you see the bow be shuffled onto stage and Doriana looks at this bow coming and very quickly takes it. And then the strangest thing, she looks directly into the crowd and her eyes land on yours, Alrix. It should be impossible. And yet she seems to just pick you out of the crowd and nods uh, in appreciation. Uh, he gives her like a, a little thumbs up saying, you got this. And as the play progresses, eventually you do all get to the final part of the play, which is, of course, the evil sorceress. And you know what? They sing a little song about her. <laughs> yes! And what? <laughs> yes! It's an old nursery rhyme that you guys know. When the fog is creeping and the moon is low when the town is sleeping the tower starts to glow that's when she arises for her midnight lunch Naughty kids are prizes for her teeth to crunch But if you obey me and obey the rules you're safe from Belcora. She just eats the fools. So you hear that little song played telling you to beware 
the evil sorceress, Belcora. It is so cute. The play's pretty good. Um, it comes to an end, and a whole town cheers for them, and everyone's delighted. And up at the very end, kind of coming off the stage, coming towards you in the crowd, Ulrich, comes that little girl, Doriana. And she comes up to you with those wide, wide eyes, and she holds out your bow and says, Thank you, mister. Oh, of course. Uh, no problem. And she kind of smiles sheepishly, and she starts walking away, but she bites her lip and she turns back, and it's like she's struggling whether to say her something or not. Something wrong. Look towards the cemetery tonight. Uh, and she uh, leaves. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? What? Uh, uh, I thought okay. that was going to be a sweet moment. I thought she was going to say something about... Uh, honestly, I don't know. But... Would you all like to make a perception check? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what the fuck? Creepy ass kid. These can all be public, of course. Yeah. Alric? Uh, okay. Smile. Eight. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Twenty-seven. You all succeed. You all succeed. What? Okay. That's a creepy. Oh. That is one creepy kid. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Mm-hmm. That was, a, that was a creepy kid. What was I, up with that? That was a creepy kid. Uh, okay. But enough of that. The stage fills once again. And this time, it is with the adults, because uh, the day's not over yet. And stepping onto the stage is Osef Menhins again. And he says, uh, Thank you once again to uh, Morlebint uh, Wonderbrook for that excellent play, and the music played so well by his husband Carter. And, of course, the teachers and students of Zarmavdian School for Grifted Children who have worked so hard for this celebration. Now, as always, we will do some announcements. Uh, first off, and he steps aside as a woman steps onto the stage. And uh, it is a dwarven lady. Um, she has a, a short red hair and a well-groomed beard, and uh, a pretty sad face, honestly. Um, she clears her throat and says, Hello, everyone, once again. Uh, this is uh, Brelda van der Veel coming to you once again to appeal for information about my missing boy. If any of you know what happened to my son, my Lazda, the... the the who worked at the drunken dragon was taken er, a few months ago I still hold out hope that he is alright if any of you have seen him please talk to me and glumly Brelda steps off the stage and you're like downer surely it won't get any worse than that <laughs> good god <Dude. laughs> and then who's that coming onto the stage to one up her Oh, God. No. But Mr. Dead Wife himself. <laughs> no. oh, Ulrich way. from the crowd just fucking face palms. He's like, oh, God, not this again. Kilolo Latinar <laughs> stands on the stage. <laughs> and he looks out firmly at everyone and says, I'm increasing the bounty to have the man who killed my wife brought to justice to 300 gold. And the crowd murmurs at that. That's a lot of money. That's Damn. a lot of money. Damn. And it's also never going to be paid because his wife was killed 30 years ago. Ulrich and Fiore, you two are very familiar with this story. Silk, not so much. We'll get into it another time, I'm sure. Lastly... Um, Long Saddle steps onto the stage and he says Local outlaws have been waylating travellers with firearms Watch yourself on the roads And people are like, okay Well, he's not wrong <laughs> And then Osef stands and says And now I believe we are ready to begin our election bid speeches This year it is myself and one other person And he seems a little bit He exhales a little bit when he says that 
because the next, the guy who stands on stage with him is unfortunately a total beefcake. What? Damn. Oh my god! Um, he stands taller than Osef. He is far more muscular than Osef. His skin is pale, almost ashy. His hair is tussled. His nose is broken, obviously. He wears a uh, leather armor that has no sleeves, and clearly he does not have a shirt under it. And some of you may recognize him, some of you may not. This is Carmen. He is the local blacksmith for uh, Blades for Glades. And he, well, the reason I didn't say his full name is because his full name is Carmen Rajani, a direct descendant of Val Rajani, the Rose Knight. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. And he folds his arms and clicks his tongue and starts tapping his foot. And Osef exhales and says, Well, let me begin then. Esteemed citizens of Atari, I stand before you today with gratitude and a deep sense of responsibility as I seek for support, uh, as I seek your support for re-election as your mayor. In the heart of you, our beloved town, I am proud to address you as Mayor Osef Menhins. It is my privilege to serve as your mayor, and together we have weathered challenges and celebrated triumphs. Otari has always been a town built on the strength of its community, and I have strived to lead with a dedication to the values that make us who we are. Hard work, integrity, and a profound love for our land. In my years as a member of the lumber business, I have learned firsthand the importance of sustainable practices. Our forests are the lifeblood of Otari, providing us not only with shelter, but also with resources that sustain our livelihoods. I am committed to ensuring that we continue to manage our lumber industry responsibly, ensuring a balance between progress and preservation. Our town has seen growth and prosperity, and with that comes the need for strategic planning. Infrastructure improvements are essential to accommodate the expanding needs of our community. I pledge to invest in the maintenance of our roads, bridges, and public spaces, ensuring that Otari remains a welcoming and accessible haven for all. Furthermore, I understand the importance of education in securing a brighter future for Otari. I propose the expansion of educational programs in conjunction with the Dawnflower Temple, investing in the training of skilled workers who will contribute to the growth of our town and prosperity of generations to come. As your mayor, I am not just a leader. I am a fellow citizen with a vested interest in the success of Otari. My commitment to transparency, accountability, and prudent decision-making is unwavering. Together, let us continue to build a town that we are all proud to call home. I humbly ask for your support in the upcoming election. I am eager to continue working alongside you to ensure that Otari remains a shining example of a prosperous and harmonious community. Thank you, and may the spirit of Otari guide us forward. How do you guys react to that speech? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speech. I, speech. I think Fiori yeah, likes him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, Pretty good. 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 Good dude. He's just a so, nice guy. So fond of him. Yeah. And then Carmen steps forward. Uh-oh. And Carmen kind of cracks his neck. He steps up and he rolls his shoulders just to show off how muscular he is. Okay. He makes a good point. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Atari, and those unfortunate enough to witness Mayor Menhin's lackluster tenure. Oh, God. I stand before you today not as a politician, but as a blacksmith with roots deep in the foundations of this town. My name is Carmen Rajani, and I believe it's high time we reclaimed Otari from the clutches of mediocrity. We've had our fair share of leaders in this town, some more capable than others. But Mayor Memhins, oh, Mayor Memhins, has proven time and time again that he's nothing more than a glorified caretaker, basking in the shadows of Asafana Memhins' legacy. I, on the other hand, trace my lineage back to Volrajani, one of the true architects of Otari. Let's not forget that the Rose Knight was a princess in her homeland and a powerful warrior here. Meanwhile, Memhins traces his line back to a priest girl with a bow and arrow. Which of those do you, people of Otari, see as a better leader? It is, of course, the warrior, not the passive priestess. Wow. While Mayor Memhins has been busy twiddling his thumbs, I've been at the forge, working hard to keep the heart of Otari beating. A true leader doesn't inherit his title. He earns it through action, dedication, and a genuine love for the people they serve. I don't need to make empty promises or throw around vague policy ideas to win your support. 
I stand here today not because I'm the best of a bad bunch, because I'm the only choice that truly honors the spirit of Otari. Let's cast off the shackles of Mayor Memian's uninspired leadership and usher in a new era. An era where Otari thrives under the guidance of someone who understands the true essence of this town. So, citizens of Otari, ask yourselves, do you want a mayor who clings to a name? Or do you want a mayor who will forge a new path to our beloved town? The choice is clear, and I trust you will make the right one. Thank you. And may Otari rise from the ashes of complacency under a leader who truly understands its soul. And he turns away and starts walking off. Then he turns back and says, And also, we should not let that sword be used in school plays. Hey. <laughs> They turns and walks off again. How do you guys react to that? Fiori <laughs> makes a Fiori made a face up to the last moment. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> you said nothing of what he even wanted to do to get this town out of quote unquote complacency. Alric and Fiore, you two have been here for a while. You know that there are elections every three years, and this is not the first time this has happened, and it will not be the last time. He does this every time, and he never learns. <laughs> actually, if Ulrich actually like knew that this is going to happen, I think he's zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was just like, oh, this is happening again, and he like tightens his bowstring or something. <laughs> it certainly speaks to his character if all he can do is demoralize his opponent. Ad hominem, ad hominem, ad hominem. How long have you been in town? <laughs> A little under three years. Clinging to the name of your ancestor sucks, unless your ancestor is my ancestor. <laughs> Literally, what the fuck? He's done this every three years. Every really? single time. Yes. And, ugh. What a loser. At some point, you just know to zero out his voice and you replace it with white noise. Sweet white noise. He has <laughs> never succeeded. Unfortunately, he also considers Fiore a pretty good friend which you quickly find out when he slaps Fiore's shoulder and says, Hey, Sun Chaser! <coughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, my man? Pretty well. How are you? Your speech went well, I think. You know what? I've really learned how to give that speech by now. I had that crowd in my hand. This is the year that the reign of Rajani starts. Mm. You know, I can feel it. He taps his chest. I hope the best for you. Ulrich is just looking at Silk. <laughs> Silk is looking at Ulrich. He has not noticed you two, by the way. He's completely ignoring you two. So do you know that one meme, the one sock puppet meme, where it's just a sock puppet looking uh, looking away and then looking at the, looking at the camera? Yeah. Yeah, with that's the with, the yeah. yeah, that is what Ulrich is doing. <laughs> Carmen says, listen, man, you're a guy who loves armor. We're going to make lots of armor when I'm mayor. Make sure to vote for me, okay? I know uh... you do every year. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> oh, he no. smiles and doesn't say anything. <laughs> okay, catch you, catch you, uh, the blade for glades later. All right, man. Uh, yeah. Make you, make you some new weapons. I can see your ones are getting a little dented, but we'll, we'll top those right up. <laughs> and hey, share, share some beer. Talk about girls, okay? Give it to <laughs> finger gun. Uh -huh. And he strides confidently off. <laughs> There he goes. Talk about girls. I think I've just met the straightest man in the world. I... He turns around and says, I'm bisexual. <laughs> and he's walking. He's bisexual. I didn't oh, he's know bisexual. That. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Interesting. I don't vote for him for reverence. That, no. I go to him for armor, and I think he decided that he liked me, and... I don't like being mean to people. <laughs> I see. So I try to be polite. It's an awkward situation you're in. It is extremely difficult to navigate when he asks if I voted for him. I think the smiling did work. It, you're roundabout. It took a while. <laughs> the sun is beginning to set, though. What do you guys do? Actually, do you guys want to go to the tavern or something? Um, that is a surprise um, to you guys. Fiori does not seem like the drinking type. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Blinks a couple times and is like, uh, okay, sure, sure. Silk? I can tag along for a little while, but I shan't stay out too late. I won't keep you out too long. So, you guys make your way 
And you're surprised when Fiore leads you to the Drunken Dragon, which is a humble tavern in the middle of town. And it has a sign portraying a dragon seemingly breeding beer. <laughs> Obsessed with that. There's awesome. live music coming from inside. <laughs> this is like a rough party tavern. This is not the kind of place you would imagine Fiore Sun Chaser spending his time. Because well, like there's a drunk guy like sleeping outside. Oh god. And Fiore is just skipping forward. All right, and Silk, how are you two doing? Shocked. Pleasantly. Very pleasantly. Huh. huh. I I wonder if he likes wine. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. You can always ask him. I guess. We knew a ray of sunshine would be here sometimes. I'm curious to see how much he can drink. So am I, absolutely. Oh, uh, Silk says, bet on it. <laughs> you push open the door, and indeed, that's a tavern, man. And because it's the Founders Festival, it is full. There are people drinking, there are like, people arm wrestling, there's darts games, there's uh, meals being served. You see at the bar, there are two bartenders uh, who appear to be s- siblings, maybe? Um, one is a tall, very heavy set man with blonde curly hair and freckles. The other is a uh, shorter, skinnier, and kind of tired looking young lady uh, who, you know, is uh, serving out some drinks. You see that dwarven lady from before, uh, that uh, Brelda Venkervale. She seems to be doing a bit of cleaning of tables. And an old, old lady. Uh, who you all know from around town is Jenny Rumwall, who is the proprietor of this place. She's kind of an eccentric. She's an alchemist. She will mix together alchemy into the drinks. She's a Mm. little bit crazy. We love her. She would love to run this place alone, but she's also 82 years old. Oh my. So as you all enter into this very, very lively tavern, what do you guys do? I don't know what Fiora's doing. (laughs) What's Fiori doing? Uh, Fiori walks directly to the bar and sits down in front of a particular bartender. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? And he's like, hi, Vanwyr. And uh, this, the big guy, he turns and he says, oh, hi, Fiori. Um, The usual. Yes, please. And he takes out a big pint glass of water and puts it in front of you. (laughs) <laughs> Auric is confused for a second and looks back at Silk. <laughs> Silk looks just <laughs> And what happens now, Fiore? Guess what I did. What did you do? You know those ruins? Which ones? The ruins of the founders of Atari? Uh, the, of their last battle? Well, like, yeah, I heard it from the story. My friends... The, my friends, we found them. No way. Mm-hmm. And? That's so impressive. And they're really big. <laughs> really? Did you go mm-hmm. inside? Yeah, we did. No way. You're yeah, so way. cool. <laughs> <laughs> he starts twirling with his hair. <laughs> the two of them twirl and sing. Silk, Silk looks <laughs> at Ulrich, mouth agape. Alric is also mouth open, but he's kind of smiling. He's like, he's not here to drink at all. (laughs) No. That little scoundrel. (laughs) Honestly, honestly, respect. I'm impressed. I didn't think you'd have a bit of color me surprised. (laughs) So I I think what Fiore's done is is doing is very spoken for. Ark and Silk, what do you two do? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think after they've like guffawed enough at um at fucking <laughs> Fury, <laughs> uh, Silk looks to Al- Alric and is like, "Well, he's not going to drink. I certainly am. Would you like to join me?" Oh, please. Well, and Silk literally holds out his hand. Uh, <laughs> Alric looks at the hand. And then back at Silk, Butt takes it and says, lead the way. Gladly. Uh, Silk happily leads the way to the bar. Not that far from Fiore. <laughs> the other bartender, the woman, 
gives you guys a smile, a very tired smile. She kind of glances over at her brother, who is, like, leaned over the table, not doing any work as he listens to this brave adventurer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she turns to you guys and says, What'll it be? And you all have some great drinks. And you know what? It's a really nice end to the night. What a Founders Festival. You stay here for a few hours drinking. There's some live music. Do any of you get particularly drunk? <sighs> or do you all keep it pretty responsible? Yeah, Silk stays responsible. Silk has duties. Alric is pretty responsible. He he's the son of Vintners. Um he knows how he knows his limit. The two of you, the three of you even, you spend time chatting once the Fiori's pulled away from a Van Wer, who he does introduce you with. And you know what? He's nice. He's nice. <laughs> um, you guys listen to live music. You relax. You chat. You make some jokes about things you saw over the day. And then the light comes. At first, it just happens once. A single flash of light passes through the windows. You know like when you're in a car and you pass a street light, and for a moment everything is illuminated in that strange yellow. It's just like that, but not yellow. Blue. But an awful cold white blue. And everything goes dark and everyone goes quiet for a second. And then not ten seconds later it happens again. A flash of blue light passes through the room. And this keeps happening. What do you three do? I Silk gets off of the bar stool that he's sitting on, and I think tries to look out the window. It's like a sweeping light passing over the town and then leaving and then returning. You can't see what it is from here, though. What do you do? Um, I think Fiore's definitely gotten up. I think he's like, ah, uh, give me a minute. And then we're not. Um, Alric also stands up and places a few, a couple gold on on the bar and goes, um, this will cover everything and more. Uh, just, sorry. And he joins Silk and Fiore and goes, isn't this the same light? It has to be, isn't it? The very exact same. And when you step outside, you recognize that to be true. Because there, in the distance, far beyond the trees, is the glow of the gaunt light, sending its lighthouse beacon, twisting through the night air, cleaving through it slowly, glowing brighter than it's ever glowed before. Well, um, suppose you might have been correct in whatever is happening is happening at night. And then the light stops spinning. It sets firmly in place. The beam is missing Otari now. It is headed directly south towards the sea. But why is it pointed in that direction? Alric, you remember yeah. a piece of advice you were given earlier. The cemetery. Indeed. <gasps> Fiore, you look down south towards the Dawnflower Temple and at the cliff above it, the Otari graveyard. The light stops there. Not like a lighthouse anymore, like a spotlight. Look to the cemetery. Uh, come with me, I know the fastest way back. Right. But are you sure we should? If it has anything to do with that lighthouse, it's worth investigating, isn't it? We still have unanswered questions. That's where I have to go home to anyways. If we must. We'll be fine. I'll make sure of it. Let's go. And then, the light of the lighthouse intensifies. And you see something very scary happen. Someone walks off the cliff above the Dawnflower Temple and crashes onto its roof. Oh. And then another person walks off the graveyard cliff onto the Dawnflower Temple and crashes below. And you're wondering... Why are there so many people in the graveyard? And then those people stand up on top of the Dawnflower Temple, silhouetted in the moonlight now, 
bodies that should be broken getting up anyway and more light continues to stream into the graveyard the lights raising the dead this is more than a haunt i have to, i have to get home right now come with me or leave i don't care um and i think he just gets up and he starts running back i'm here silk follows uh alric definitely follows he's sprinting Bells ring, True Otari, from the Dawnflower Temple, and guards start running too. The three of you rush towards the Dawnflower Temple, towards the Otari Graveyard, towards the awful light, ready to take on the unquiet dead within. This episode of Dust to Roll would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. Quinlan Boss, Princess Alavi, Emily is Gay, Dexton, Meow Mai, Michael Wallet, Knight the Werewolf Teacher, Ashley, Actually a Bot, Violet, Seraphine, Kyle Damon, Sol Gris Lobo, Phoebe Gbees, Daisy Gilliam, Lux Rexus, Berden Stormcrook, Sam Stryker, Tony Saunders, Mita, Arave, Belmonts, Marshmallowberry, Firek Falcon, Luis Loza, Ares, Alexander Krizzle, May Cohen, Skyly, Jimly Tricked, Transgirl Trish, Baal Punyon, Joy the Catman Extraordinaire, Matthew Wilson Krasnovich, Till and Shark, Glitch HD, Jay Snooks, Jonathan Love, G Barbera, Luke Gideon, Sarah B, Seth, Kira, Lichlope, Gizmo, Cass, Fable McElduff, Ava, Rem T. Bright, Lonesome Chunk, Steph, Sean C, Natasha Lumley, Rhiannon C, Ellie, Jenna Mitchell, Kane Kendrick, Sky Evangeline, Triceratops, Anna Maria, Jordan, Emily Laderna, John de Booker, SS6 Seeker, and Dame Valerie the Third. If you'd like to see what you can get for helping us keep it rolling, check out patreon.com slash dice roll today. <laughs>